So next, I'd like to introduce a geometric representation of the same ideas that I find very convenient for keeping things straight. We're thinking about states 1 to s, so the listing of all the things that the discount factor could be in each state, or the listing of all the values that the payoff could be in each state. We can think of those random variables as vectors in, in Rs. And more generally, we think about random variables as vectors in, in a function space like L2. Now, when we think of uh, random variables as vectors in this way, uh, it's very useful to think about spatial relationships between them. And I want to give you an analogy that, that, if you're familiar with it, will make this all go down much easier. Think about a regression. In a regression, we, we run a regression of y on x with an error term. Uh, and in particular, think of two different x's, x1 and x2, with an error term. And we use all sorts of geometric language to describe that. We, we call x times b the projection of y on x. We, we call minimizing the size of the error, we call the error the size, and we call, call minimizing the size of the error the thing that the regression tries to do. When we notice that the errors have a, there's no second moment between the errors and the right-hand variable, we say the error is orthogonal to the right-hand variable, orthogonal meaning at right angles. Where does that geometric language come from? Well, a common way to do that is to plot the uh, x's, the, the things that can happen to the right-hand variable. I put them here as two points. This is a three-dimensional diagram with the third dimension going into the board. So x1 and x2 are like two points on a three-dimensional diagram. Then there is a plane of possible values where b1x1 plus b2x2 can go. The plane of, of random variables that are spanned by uh, x1 and x2. So I've drawn that. If x1 and x2 are like this, that's a plane going a little bit in the board. y is a random variable off the plane. So uh, the way we think of a regression is, is finding the point on the plane that is closest to y, minimizes the size of the error. Uh, thinking of the second moment of the error as its size. And when we say projection, well, that really is. We're projecting y on the plane, and the error orthogonal to the right-hand variables means that this error vector is, in fact, at right angles to the plane. That's a very useful language. Let's apply the same kind of language to what we're doing. We have a discount factor. Let us plot state 1 and state 2. This one is mercifully a two-dimensional diagram, but three-dimensional versions are coming. So let's think of state 1 and state 2. We have a discount factor. Well, that's a vector, and it's positive in all states. So it points into the positive orthant here. There's m pointing into the positive part. When we say e of mx, now we can think of that as an inner product. We can think of that as m dot x, if you will, or that's another notation for inner product. And so, for example, if 0 equals e of mre, we can then say that the discount factor and excess returns are orthogonal, because they are two vectors whose inner product is 0. So that lets us construct a state space representation, a picture of where everything goes. m is a vector in the positive, uh, in the positive orthant of our state space. An excess return is a vector like this. It's a vector at right angles to m. And the set of all uh, excess returns, the set of all price zero securities, has to be this set that is at right angles to M. Where's the risk-free rate? Uh, the risk-free rate, a risk-free payoff has 1-1. One, one. Uh, the risk-free rate is a little bigger than 1-1, one, one, but it's the same in both states of nature. Where are all asset returns? Well, asset returns are securities whose E of m r is 1, or the inner product of m with r is 1. How do you do an inner product? You take this vector and that vector, you project this vector onto that vector, and multiply the two together. So this is set in green is the set of all vectors whose inner product with m is 1. So all returns are vectors that lie on that plane. Similarly, where's all the price 2 objects? Well, all the price 2 objects are vectors whose inner product with m is 2, and therefore they all lie on that plane there. Rf, of course, is, is the point uh, on the um, price 1 where the two values are the same in both states of nature. So what have we got? You, you can see that um, 
The mapping from payoffs to prices is a linear function. We're looking at isoquants of that linear function from the state space to the real line. And you have a very pretty representation of where all of our objects lie. Uh, return, excess returns, returns, price to objects, objects of same price are on, are on uh, hyperplanes orthogonal to the discount factor.